Sponsored by Rabbi Shlemi and Mirla Greenwald. This is a sicha from Lakuta Sichis, Chelik Yud Aleph, Parshas Beshalach, Sicha Gimel. And the topic of the sicha is that in this week's parsha, we learned the Pasuk of Al Yetzei Ishmim Kaimai, Bayem Hashvi. And Razal learned from here that Elu Al Paim Amo Shal Tchum Shabbos. We learned the halacha of Tchum Shabbos from this Pasuk. Now, this sicha is a Siyam and Mesechus Erevin. And there are four parts in the Sikha. The rebel number one presents a teaching of Rabbi Shimon from Masechus Erevin about Tchum Shabbos, and then present where this teaching is taught again as a general principle at the end of Masechus Erevin, in the seam of Masechus Erevin. Number two, ask two questions on this ending of Masechus Erevin. Number three, answer the questions. And number four, present how to understand all of this in Pnimis and Yonim, as well as the Heira, in Avedis Adam. On the Pasuk in our parsha of Al Yetze Ishmim Kaimai Bayem Hashvi, that a person is not allowed to leave their place on the seventh day of Shabbos, so Razal said, and it's brought in Rashi on the Pasuk, Elu al Paim Ama Shel Tchum Shabbos. These are the 2,000 Amas of Tchum Shabbos, meaning that Razal learned from this Pasuk the Isser on Shabbos to go out of the Tchum of 2,000 Amas from the city. So in short, what this means is if a person is in an area that is not part of the city, out, let's say, in the desert, so a person has 2,000 Amas that they're allowed to travel in either direction, which is around 3,000 feet. And if a person is in a city, so the whole city is considered their own little four Amas, and they could travel an additional 2,000 Amas outside of the city. And Razal learned this din from this Pasuk in our Parsha of Al Yetzei Ishmim Kaimai Bayema Shvi. Now, regarding the dinim of Tchumen, so Rabbi Shimon and the Rabbanon argue in the end of Perak Dalid of Mesechus Erevin on Dafnun Beis Amud Beis. This is about halfway through the Mesechta. The Mishnah over there says, Misha Hechshich Chutzla Tchum, someone who was outside of the Tchum when it became dark, when Shabbos entered, Afilu Ama Achas, even if there are one Ama outside of it, Layi Kones, they may not enter. Rabbi Shimon Eimer, Rabbi Shimon says, Afilu Chamesh Esra Ames, even if they are 15 Amas away from the Tchum, Yikanes, the person may enter. And the reason is, She'ein Hamashachis Mematzen Es Amidis, the surveyors, the ones who set up the distance of 2,000 Amas, they weren't exact in their measurements, Mipnei Hatoyin, because of the people that would make a mistake. Meaning, the Rabbi Shimon holds that when they measure and indicate the place where the 2,000 Amas outside of the city end, they didn't put it exactly 2,000 Amas away, but rather they placed it 15 Amas shy of the Tchum. And they did this because of people who may mistakenly go past the markers and only notice it after going a little beyond the Tchum, beyond the markers. So they made this buffer zone so that if a person passed the markers and then realized that they went past it, they still have 15 Amas beyond the markers that are still in the Tchum. And so it comes out that a person who is within 15 Amas of the Tchum is really inside of the Tchum, and therefore, if the person is within 15 Amas of the Tchum, they are allowed to enter. Now, this reasoning of Rabbi Shimon is repeated as a general principle, as a general klal, in the final Mishnah in Masechus Erevin at the end of Perak Yud. So the final Mishnah is on Daf Kuf Dalid Amid Beis, and then there's the Gemara in the Mishnah which ends the Masechta on Daf Kuf Hey Amid Aleph. It says over there in the Mishnah, at the end of the Mishnah, Rabbi Shimon Oimer, and we're just going to read what he says and then explain it afterwards. Mekayim shi tir chachamim mishalcha nasnu lecha. And the Gemara explains on the very final Amr on Daf Kuf Hey Amr Aleph, the very final Amr of the Homo Sechta, the Rabbi Shimon here is teaching the reasons for two different Allahs. Rabbi Shimon over here is saying two things. When he says, 
that's giving us the reason to one halacha. When he says shaloyutir lucha elam mishum shavus, is giving us the reason for another halacha. So when it says mekayim sheitir lucha chachamim mishulcha nas nulcha, that refers to the above din of Rabbi Shimon of the case of Misha Hirshik Chutzlat Chum, someone who was outside of the Tchum when Shabbos, at the time of Shabbos entered, where Rabbi Shimon Eimer, Afilu Chamesh Esra Amis Yikonis, that even if the person is 15 Amis out of the Tchum, they're allowed to en- enter the Tchum, and he's explaining here that because it's Mishal Cha, Mekayim Shirtir Chachamim, Mishal Cha, because it's Shal Cha, meaning that the person is already in the Tchum, the person is really in the Tchum, because the Tchum extends 15 Amas outside of the markers, so therefore, therefore they allow the person to enter. And when he says, that refers to a different din in an earlier Mishnah in Perak Yud, also towards the end of the Masechda, it's on Daf Kuv Beis, Amad Beis, where the Mishnah says, Kaishrim Nima Ba Mikdash of Aleve Medina, Vim Batchila Kan Vekan Aser. This is the opinion of the Rabbanan, that if a string from one of the instruments in the base of Mikdash ripped, so a person is allowed to tie it in the base of Mikdash, but if such a string were to rip outside of the base of Mikdash, in the Medina, in Yerushalayim, then a person is not allowed to tie it. V'im batchila, and if we're talking about a string that was never attached, a person just wants to tie it to connect it, so then kan kan asr, both here in the Mikdash and in the Medina, in Yerushalayim, it's forbidden. And Rabbi Shimon argues and says in Abraisa that Oinva, he says a person is not allowed to make a kshira, can only make an aniva. So kshira is something which is a, a, a knot, and if the knot is a kesher shal kayama, it's permanent, then it's asr manatera. And an aniva is more like a bow. So Rabbi Shimon argues and says a person cannot make a kshira, even if it's not permanent, and they can only make an aniva. And he's explaining over here, when he says, that the Rabbanon were only matter in Aniva that cannot bring to a Chiyav Chatas. They only permitted in Aniva, which is a Shvus. A Shvus is something which is only Osram at the Rabbanon. So they only permitted in Aniva, which is a Shvus, but they did not permit Kshira, which is able to bring to an actual Malacha. And that would be a case of a Chiyav Chatas, because if it's a Kesha Shal Kayama, then that's also in the Torah, and there's a chi of chatas involved. So when he says, he's explaining the reason for his din on Daf Kuv Beis, Amad Beis, for why a person can't make a kshira, a person's only allowed to make an aniva. Now regarding the connection between these two teachings of Rav Shimon, the one of Mekayim Shaitir Lucha Chachamim Mishalcha Nasnu Lucha, and the one of Shalaitir Lucha El Mishum Shvus. So Rashi explains that Rabbi Shimon is saying to the Tanakama that even though I was lenient by Machshich Chutzlat Chum, and I said Yikonas, the person's allowed to come into the Tchun, Rabbi Shimon is telling the Tanakama that nevertheless I'm strict by Nima Skinner by the string of a Kinner because there. By the case of the Tchum, Mishal Cha, since it was yours, you're really in the Tchum, you're in the 2000 Amas, therefore Nasal Cha. But here, Laitiru El Shvus, they only permitted a Shvus, and therefore I'm strict. So that's how Rashi explains the connection between these two teachings. He's saying, although I was lenient here, I'm going to be le- strict in this other case. And Taisvus says that the connection between the two cases is that there, in the case of the person being outside of the Tchum, it's not a leniency really, because Mishal Cha, since it's already yours, Nasnul Cha, that's what they gave it to you. It's really that the person is in the Tchum. And also here, Le Nasnul Cha Ella Mishal Cha, a person is only being given what is permitted, which is Aniva, which is an Aniva, which is Mutter, but not Kshira, which could lead to a Chiyav Chatas. So Taisa says the connection between the two teachings is that they're both based on the same idea that there's really no leniency here and it's fully permitted both in the case by the Tchum because the person is really within the 2000 Amas as well as the case of the string of the Kinner of the harp where making an Aniva is entirely Mutter. So that's the connection between the two cases that both of them are cases and instances where what the person is being permitted to do is Mishal Cha, it's theirs, it's entirely mutter. And there are two questions here. The first question is on the connection between these two teachings of 
Rabbi Shimon, and we're going to ask both on Rashi and on Taisvis. According to Rashi, what's the connection between these two teachings that as a result Rabbi Shimon has to teach us that he is strict in this case of the Nimas Kinner, the string of the harp, even though he is lenient in this case of the person who went out of the Tchum? Well, how are these two cases connected that I would therefore think that if he's lenient in one, he has to be lenient in the other? And so he has to tell me that although he's lenient in one, he's not lenient than the other, rather he's strict than the other one. Would it enter someone's mind that the leniency in the case of machshech chutz latchum should mean a leniency by kshira in the mikdash? Why would a person make such a mistake to think that he's lenient in the case of the nimas kinner since he's lenient by machshech chutz latchum? How are these two cases connected that I would think the leniency by one should lead to a leniency in the other? And according to Taisvis, that the reasoning for both of these teachings of Rabbi Shimon both that he says Yikonis, the person should enter the Tchum, and both what he says that Oinva, a person could only make an Aniva, is because it's Mishalcha, and therefore Nasnolcha, it's really Mutter. So then Rabbi Shimon should have just said, Mikayim Sheyitur Lcha Chachamim, Mishalcha, so Nasnolcha, and nothing more. Because this explanation of Mishalcha, Nasnolcha is also the reason to be strict by Nimas Kinner Shanifsaka. Why are we strict? Because they only give you what's already permitted. And doing a, a kshira, making a kshira, is not already permitted. So that's why he's strict. And he says, you can't make a kshira, you could only make an aniva, because that is mishalcha. The aniva is permitted, therefore, nasnu lucha. So why does he add, shalo yitir lucha, el There's no need to add that, according to Teisvis. And especially since the lashon of the Mishnah is davar katsar hakelu linyanim rabim. The Mishnah is always written in very short. So according to Teisvis, why doesn't it just say the First part, Rabbi Shimon Eimer, Mekayim Sheyitir Lucha Chachamim, Mishalcha, if it's yours, and since it's yours, Nasan Lucha, therefore they permit it to you, and that would cover the explanation for his teaching in both cases. And the second question is, these words of Rabbi Shimon that refer to the case of Mach Shechotz Latchum and of Kaishur Nima Bamikdash, are the conclusion of a Mishnah that teaches the din of Sheretz Shanimsa Mikdash. What happens if a Sheretz, which is Tomei, is found in the Mikdash? And there are two opinions over there in the Mishnah, whether a person takes that out with the belt of the Kayan, or whether the person should wait and make tongs of wood, or get tongs of wood, and take it out with those tongs, since wooden tongs would not become Tomei. So should the person use the belt of the Kayan, which will then become Tomei, or should they get tongs made out of wood or some other item that won't become Tomei and use that to get out the Sharetz? So it's written at the conclusion of that Mishnah that seems not to have any connection to it, to the teaching of, of uh, Rabbi Shimon. If so, the teaching of Rabbi Shimon should have been taught after one of the teachings it's referring to, either on Daf Nun Beis or on Daf Kuf Beis, or you could teach it here as its own Mishnah. But why is, inc- why is it included and in part of the Mishnah that talks about a Sheretz Shanim Tzabah Mikdosh? So the answer to these questions will be understood by first presenting so we're going to go to the side discussion and explain a certain idea and then come back based on that and answer our questions. So it's by first presenting one of the reasons for what it says in Shulchan Aruch that it's a mitzvah lachzer acher eruve chatseris bein acher shitofem avois. There's a mitzvah to make an erev chatseris or a shitof by a mavoi. So in short, what we're referring to over here is that we have houses that are opened up to a courtyard. Now the houses and the courtyard are a rishus yachid, but a person may make a mistake and think that the houses are Rosh Hashanah because each one has their own house, and the courtyard is Rosh Hashanah because it's sheared by the public. And if a person carries from their house to the courtyard, they may now think that they could carry from their house to the street, which is a Rosh Hashanah And therefore, a person has to make an area of Chatseris, which basically brings together all the people in the houses that are attached to the courtyard to be one entity, and so the person can see that it's all one Rosh Hashanah And by a Mavoy, it's a little different. We're talking about sort of like an alley that opens up to the street, and a person may think that it's a public area, it's a Rosh Hashanah because it's open to the Rosh Hashanah And if the person is allowed to carry from their house to this alley, so then they would think they could also carry to the street, and so therefore a person has to make a physical indication that the alley is not considered a Rosh Hashanah it's removed from the Rosh Hashanah it's actually a so it's brought down in Shulchan Aruch that it's a mitzvah to make an Eir of Chatseris and a Shutuf Mavois. 
Now, one of the reasons for this is that it's so it's basically for the person's pleasure that the person is able to freely go around and bring things that they need. And this is a mitzvah, like it says in the Pasuk, that Shabbos is a day of Oynik. And so based on that, it's understood that similarly over here, in the case of the Tchum, that because of Enik Shabbos, it's a mitzvah to be within the Tchum of the city, so that a person is able to letayel, a lahavi v'chulu, in the entire city. There's a preference, and we would like that the person should be in the Tchum for the purpose of Enik Shabbos, because when a person is in the city, they're more free in, in, in terms of where they're able to go, letayel, and do things on Shabbos, so there's actually a preference that we would like for the person to be in the Tchum because of the Einik Shabbos aspect. And according to this, we can say that there's a Chiyuv on a person, Shehech Shechutz Latchum, to enter the city. We actually have a Chiyuv on the person. It's not an, it's not exactly a Chiyuv, but it's a certain aspect, in a way, a certain aspect of, of a Chiyuv that we want the person to enter. So that the Isser of Ashbasis Einig, this Isser of not having Einig, doesn't extend to the whole 24 hours of Shabbos. So what we're basically saying over here is that according to this reason of making the Erev Chatseris and the Shutuf Faimu Vais, if we apply it to a Tchum, we could say that we also have a reason that the person should enter so that they don't not have Einig throughout Shabbos, they don't have the Isser of Ashbasis Einig, and it shouldn't extend for the entirety of the whole Shabbos, so we want the person to come in. According to this explanation, so we can say that the opinion of Rabbi Shimon by, machsh, by a person who was machshech chutz latchum, that ikonis, it stems from a general point of Rabbi Shimon's, which is that riboy hakamas takes precedence over goydala echos, which means if there is something which has more kamas but less echos, and another thing which has more echos and less kamas, so the one that has more kamas takes precedence and overrides the one that has more echos. And let, we'll explain what that means. According to, abo- to the above, what we just said, the reason Rabbi Shimon rules Yikonis, that one not only is able to enter, that one must enter, not just that one may enter, is in order that the person doesn't continue doing the Isser of Hashbas Sa'enik, not having Einik throughout Shabbos. And even though through Yikonis, a person will be doing an Isser of going outside of the Tchum, which is stricter than the Isser of Hashbas Sa'enik, so the Echos, the quality of the Isser is greater of going outside of the Tchum. So even though the quality of the Avera is greater than the Isser of Hashbasa Sa'inik of staying in one's place, and in parentheses it points out that also there's another aspect that makes going outside the Tchum stricter than not having Oinik, that going outside the Tchum is done through an action. The person has to do something, whereas Hashbasa Sa'inik is through not doing something, and doing something is always more strict and severe than an Avera through not doing something. So even though through Yukonis the person is going to be doing an Isser of going outside the Tchum, which is stricter than the Isser of Ashbasa Sa'inig, nevertheless Rabbi Shimon holds Yukonis. Because then, if the person goes in, the person is only doing an Isser at the time they enter the Tchum, which is not so when a person remains outside of the Tchum, that the Isser continues every moment that they are there. And Rabbi Shimon holds that Riboy Hakamas, the quantity of having an Avera, the entire Shabbos of Ashbasa Sa'inig, overrides Gaida La'echos, the Isser of going into the Tchum. And therefore, Rabbi Shimon says, better to go into the Tchum, where the Kamas is less. It's less Kamas of an Avera. It's a one time thing, even though the Echos is greater, than to remain outside of the Tchum, where the Echos, the quality is less. The quality of the Avera is not as severe, but the Kamas is much greater. The person is going to be doing Ashbasa Sa'inig the entire 24 hours. So the Kamas is more important than the Echos, and therefore Yukonis. According to this, we can understand the connection between the two kolalim, the two rules of Rabbi Shimon, that number one, So we're going to answer the first question that we had about what's the connection between these two rules, these two kolalim of Rabbi Shimon, that they're taught together. Regarding the two ways of fixing a kinar, so we already spoke about going out of the tchum and how it's, how it's a case where Rabbi Shimon is saying Kamas overrides Eichus. 
So we, now we're going to move on to the case of the kinner. So regarding the two ways of fixing a kinner, either through shira or through aniva, each one has a chaymer, a certain stringency that the other one doesn't have. The chaymer of kshira is that it's osi lidechi of chatos. It can bring to a chatos because if it's a kasher shal kayama, then that's osi manatera. It's an actual malacha, an av malacha which is a chaymer of echos, that's the quality, it's a much more severe avera, which is not so by a niva, which is only forbidden mid since it's very, since it, it very easily comes apart. On the other hand, because of this itself, that an aniva comes apart very easily, there's a chaymer by a niva, because since a niva doesn't last, so a person will likely have to fix the kiner a few times, so that's a chaymer of kamas, the person will have to make an aniva a few times. So it comes out that the question in this case depends on whether Echos overrides Kamas. And we say Echos is more important, so we don't want the person making a Kshira, and they should make an Aniva. Or do we say Kamas overrides Echos, and we don't want the person to make many ta- many Anivas, therefore just do Kshira. And therefore, after Bishimin teaches us his approach by the din of Hamachshich Chutz Latchum Yikonais, that he's selling, telling us over there that Kamas overrides Eichos, so then logic dictates that also by Nimus Kinner, he will, he will rule to be Mater Eikshira, since there's less Kamas, and not to be Mater in Aniva, which has more Kamas, because he says Kamas is more important than Eichos. And it's this thinking that Rabbi Shimon comes to address and negate when he says, Shvos. What's Rabbi Shimon telling us here? Rabbi Shimon is saying that even though he was lenient with the echos of the Isra of Tchumen, the echos is greater than Hashbas HaSainik, but he was lenient in order not to add in the Kamas of the Isra. Nevertheless, he is strict by the echos of Kshira, and he isn't moderate in order to minimize the Kamas of Aniva. And what's the reason? Because What does he mean with those words? Meaning, this principle, this kalal, that kamas overrides echos, is only when both of them are in the same category and type of iser, whether they're both menatera or both midrabanon. So even though one echos is greater than the other, but with, it's within a context. They're both menatera, they're both midrabanon, one has more echos than the other. But this is not so by fixing a kinner where the kamas of aniva isn't strong enough to override the echos of kshira, which is asi ledechi of chatos. Kshira is a whole nother echos. It's on an entirely more severe level because it's asi ledechi of chatos. And therefore, the kamas of the aniva is not strong enough to override the echos of kshira. And to the contrary, actually the echos of kshira, which is minatera, because it can bring to a of chatos, overrides the kamas of aniva, which is only an Isr that's Midr Rabbanon. And so that's the connection between these two cases, that both of them are, are instances where there is an element of Kamas and an element of Echos. And so Rabbi Shimon is saying that even though, in the case of Mach Shech Chutz Latchum, he said that Kamas overrides Echos, nevertheless, in the case of Nimas Kinner in the, by the Mikdash, he says Echos overrides Kamas. And the reason is because it's an Echos of an entirely different type, and therefore it's more powerful than the Kamas. Now, a proof for this, that even if we generally say Kamas overrides Eichos, nevertheless, if the Eichos is in an entirely different category, so then the Eichos actually overrides the Kamas, a proof for this is from what the Rebbe writes in his Shulchan Aruch. The Alter Rebbe says that if on Shabbos there's a sick person who's in danger and needs meat, so we may shecht an animal for this person. The Alter Rebbe continues and says that we don't say that we should rather feed the person the Vela, not kosher meat, which is an Isr Lav, and we shouldn't be Mechal Shabbos, which is an Isr Skila. It would seem that that's a good idea, better to feed the person not kosher meat, which is only an Isr Lav, and not to be Mechal Shabbos by shechting an animal, which is an Isr Skila. The Alter Rebbe says we don't say that because by an Avelo the person is over by each Kezayis. If you give the person not kosher meat, then each Kezayis is another Kezayis of Nevelo, of not kosher meat. Not so by Shechitna, where the person only does one Isser, even though it's a stricter Isser. So we see over here that Kamas overrides Eichos. That even though the Eichos of the Avera of Shechting is more severe, nevertheless the Kamas of eating Nevelo is more severe, and we prefer that the person is over the Eichos and not the Kamas, because Kamas is, is, overrides Eichos. The Alter Rebbe now continues and says that, however, if they need to boil wine for the sick person, 
And so we have two choices. Either the Yid will boil the wine, and then that's an Isser on Shabbos, or a guy will do it, and then it's an Isser of Stam Yenam. So he says a Yid should fill it up, and a guy should boil it. Because even though then there's more kamas for every revius of drinking the wine at Stam Yenam, but if the Yid would do it, it'll be only one Avera. He says, because nevertheless, it is only an Isser Medrabanam. So he's saying, even though the kamas is greater by Stam Yenam, but the Echos is of an entirely different Echos, because boiling water is Isser Menatera, and Stam Yenam is Isser Medrabanam. So then kamas will not override Echos. So we see clearly that specifically the kamas of the Isser of Nevela, which is Menatera, overrides the Echos of the Isser of Shechita and Shabbos, because they're both Menatera, not so by the by the Isser of Stam Yenam, which is Medura Banan, that there the Echos of the Isser, which is Menatera, overrides the Kamas of the Isser, which is Medura Banan, because it's an entirely different category, it's Medura Banan, so then the Echos will override the Kamas. So we have a proof for this idea from this teaching of the Alter Rebbe in Shulchan Aruch. According to all of this, we can also understand and answer our second question of why this teaching of Rabbi Shimon, that was placed at the end of the Mishnah that speaks of a Sheret Mikdash, and it wasn't placed in its own Mishnah. The reason is because the case of a Sheret Mikdash deals with this very same question, as we'll explain in a moment. It deals with this very same question. Does Kamas, in the case of the Sheretz, of, refers to Kamas of time, override Echus, or does Echus, in the case of Sheretz, it's referring to the Echus of Tumah, override Kamas? And since the mission of a Sheretz, Shinim Tzabah Mikdash, deals with this same question of whether Kamas overrides Echus, or Echus overrides Kamas, therefore the teaching of Rabbi Shimon is placed in the Mishnah, because they're all talking about the same Basic, the same klal behind everything that's being taught here. Now, how was the mission about a sheret shenimtza b'miktosh talking about eichas and kamas? The mission teaches sheret shenimtza b'miktosh, a sheret which is tommy that's found in the miktosh. Kain meitziyei behem yoyne. The kain takes that out with his belt, one of the garments of the kain. Shalei l'shayas es atuma, in order not to keep the tuma there for longer. Divrei Rabbi Yechanan ben Breika. These are the words. This is the opinion of Rabbi Yechanan ben Breika. Rabbi Huda Eimer. Rabbi Huda says he argues with Rabbi Yechanan. He says, "You take it out b'tzvas shall eats with tongs of wood, which are not mekabel tuma, because generally speaking, if something's made out of wood, it's not mekabel tuma unless it's made as a kli, as a container to contain. So the kain should take it out with tongs of wood shalele rabbes is a tuma, and not to, in order not to spread and make more of the tuma." Because the belt will be the belt of the kain will become tummy, but the tongues won't. And the Gemara explains that the basis of their argument is Marsover, Rabbi Yehuda says, Tuma Kamus Adif. It's better, it's better to have Kamus of Tuma. Echus is more powerful. We don't want to have the Echus of spreading the Tuma further to other items. So it's better to have the Kamus. O Marsover and Rabbi Yechen Membreko holds Afushe Tuma, Echus, which is Echus Adif. It's better to have the Echos of Tumah going to another item and not to have the Kamas, because Kamas overrides Echos. We don't want the Tumah to stay there for longer, more time, more Kamas, and therefore it's better to spread the Tumah to the belt and take it out faster. And so we see that all these teachings relate to this question of whether Kamas overrides Echos or Echos overrides Kamas, and that's why they're all taught in the same Mishnah. Now we're going to move on and explain these ideas in Pnimisi Nyanim, and we're going to see what is the Ira in Avedis Adam. So we can explain the connection and difference of the two teachings, the two principles of Rabbi Shimon in Pnimisi Nyanim. And according to this explanation, we'll have another reason why Rabbi Shimon holds that if we can be matter a person to re-enter the Tchum, then we must do so. So it's explained in a number of places that the Malacha of Hitzah, taking out something from one rishos to another rishos, is the ikr of all the malachas. Now what's the basis for this? Because it's written in the Medrash that a certain min asked Rabbi Akiva, he asked him, Im Baruch Hu If it's like your words, that Hashem honors the Shabbos, then Al Yashiv Baruchus, Hashem shouldn't make winds below on Shabbos. Al Yerid Bok Shamim, he shouldn't make, he shouldn't bring 
down rains on Shabbos. And Al Yatzmiach Ba Esav, he shouldn't make grass and things grow on Shabbos. And Rabbi Kiva replied with a marshal from an Erev and Hitza. And he was essentially saying that in one Rishus, one doesn't need an Erev for Hitza. And so to the whole world is Hashem's. It's one Rishus. And so Hashem is able to do Hitza because it's not Hitza, Rishus, Rishus. It's all one Rishus. And it's a wonder over here. Rabbi Kiva only responded to the question about Hitza. He also asked them about making grass grow and other things. So we must say, based on this, that the malacha of Yitzah is the main concept and foundation of all the malachas, and that all the malachas, their tuldus, the tuldus of all the malachas, and all the shvusim stem from Yitzah. And we'll explain how, we'll give the explanation of this in a moment. But that's what we must say based on this. And therefore, since the whole idea of Yitzah doesn't exist by Hashem, so automatically all the malachas, which stem from Yitzah, also don't exist by Hashem. And based on this idea, we can explain another thing. We can explain the reason why Mesech Shabbos starts with the Molochah of Yitzah. The Mesech starts with Yitzhah Shabbos. And this is even though Yitzah is counted at the end of all the Molochahs, when the Molochahs are written in order in Perek Zayin, Yitzah is the last one. Why does the whole Mesech start with Yitzah? It's because Yitzah is the main concept of all the Molochahs. Now, what's the explanation for this? The explanation for this is as follows. The idea of Shabbos is Shabbos L'Hashem. By Yom Tif, we say it's Chetzi L'Hashem V'Chetzi L'Chem. Half for Hashem and half for you. But by Shabbos, it is Kulei L'Hashem. It's entirely for Hashem. Meaning that the whole idea of Shabbos is like it's brought down L'Kvaya Ben Afshesenu to set into our hearts, to engrave into our hearts and Munas Chidush Ha'ilam our faith in the world being created by Hashem, that Hashem created the world in six days and rested on the seventh day, and so to now, He is constantly creating the world, and therefore, since Hashem created and is creating the world, Hashem is the only ruler of the world, and the whole world is under His control and His supervision. And this means that even though the world, and the world is called an Eilam, Elash and Helen Hester, was made in such a way that a person may make a mistake that it operates on its own, and that there's no single ruler of the world, but rather, there are two Rishuyas, there are two entities. There's a Rishus of Taiv and Kedusha, there is holiness and goodness, and then there's also a Rishus of Rav It would seem that there's two different forces in the world, one of Taiv and Kedusha, of goodness and holiness, and one of Ra and Tumah, of evil and impurity. And so, through, through the keeping of Shabbos, the Muna that the whole world is one wishes for Hashem is Nikva in us. So that's essentially what is accomplished through Shabbos, that there's only one Rishus, there's only one power, one force in the world. And so it's understood that by doing Malachas on Shabbos, if a person does a Malacha on Shabbos, it causes two things. Number one, a weakening of this Amuna that Hashem created and is creating the world. And it strengthens the opposite, which is the Helim, the concealment and the mistake that there are two Rishuyas. And so it comes out that the main akudah of all the malachas is Hitzah Mershus Ayachar. All the malachas, essentially, if a person chas v'shalom, does a malacha, it's going to bring about Hitzah Mershus Ayachar. It will bring about that there's two Rishuyas. There's Rishus Ayachar and Rishus Arabim. There are two Rishuyas. A person's doing the Hitzah Mershus Ayachar. And that really captures the whole idea of Shabbos that there's only one Rishus, no Hitzah. And this is actually the intent of the answer of Rabbi Kiva when he said that Kala Oilam Kulay Shalay, that the whole world is Hashem's and there is no Hitzah. The deeper meaning of this is that he was saying that since to Hashem there can't be any Helam Vehester, there can't be any concealment, there can't be any, any cover-up on the truth that the whole world, even the existence of Ra, is a Rosh Yachid, Hashem sees that truth, it can't be hidden from him, and eventually this truth will also be revealed down here. So therefore, since this truth is seen to Hashem, so the main Malacha, and as a result, all the malachas that stem from the main malach of Eitzah don't exist by Hashem. The whole idea of Eitzah doesn't exist to Hashem. There's no such thing as making another Rishus from Hashem's perspective. And so, therefore, the main malacha and all the malachas that really embody the same idea don't exist by Hashem. Moving along now from Hitzah and all the Malachas which stem from Hitzah, we're now going to talk about the idea of Tchumim. 
Everything in the world is divided into three general categories, which are hinted to in the three Rishuyas of Shabbos. There's a category of things of Kedusha, and there the Avaidah with them is in the way of Asei Toiv, and this is like a Rishus HaYachid, like we said, Rishus HaYachid is Rishus of HaYachid, Yechid Yishalei Hashem, that's the category of Kedusha. And then there's a category of things of Ra, and there the Avaidah with them is in a way of Sur Meira, like a Rishus Rabim, where it says it's connected to the idea of Turi de Pruda, of Klippa and Sitra Achra. So when it comes to the world of Kedusha, the goal is Asei Toiv. When it comes to things of, of Ra, the goal is Sur Meira, that a person should not engage with them. And then in the middle, there's a category of Inyone Rishus, which they are like a Mamutza, an intermediate between a Mitzvah and an Isser. And the Vaidu with them is in 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 one of the two ways that we mentioned. Either, like in Kedusha, would be to elevate them to Kedusha, or like we said about Ra, it's Kaddish Atzmecha B'Mutalach, so it's either through Asei Toiv, using them to serve Hashem, like Kol Ma'asecha Yul Hashem Shemaim, and Bechol Derechecha De'eyu, or it's through more a way of Surmei Ra, that Kaddish Atzmecha B'Mutalach, that the person is Mekaddish themselves through not engaging with this thing that's Mutter. And this is like a chotzer in or mavoi or carmelis. These are places by Shabbos, which they are mamutza between a rishus hayachid and a rishus harabim. And through making an air of chotzeris and shutafim uvois, they are made into a rishus hayachid. So they're in between the two rishus, and they can be brought into the rishus hayachid, just like in yoni rishus that are in between kedusha and ra, and they can be brought into the world of kedusha. And according to this, it's understood. That the ideas of a ear of chatzeris and shitaf emovais are the same. Their main point is to enlarge the rishus and the tchum, the area of a yid, which is the rishus of gdusha, which is otherwise small in quantity. So the whole idea of the ear of chatzeris and shitaf emovais, beruchnis, represents bringing more things into the realm, into the world of gdusha, and elevating in yon rishus and bringing them into the realm of gdusha. And on Shabbos, that's the idea of an air of Chatzeris and a Shetafim of Ice, bringing more things into the world of Gdusha. And according to this, we can connect, it would seem that we can connect the two principles, the two teachings of Rabbi Shimon, where he said, which we said refers to Tchumen, which is to expand the Tchum of Gdusha, and which we said, and all Malachas, their foundation, like all the Malachas, is the idea of Eitzah. And so both of them share a common point which is that to expand and to keep things in the Rishus HaYochet. And then the Rebbe elaborates a little bit that especially since the connection between Tchumen and Shvus is reflected in the differences of opinion about the basis of their Isser. So briefly in short, there are three opinions about the basis for Tchumen and the basis for Shvus. When it comes to Tchumen, one opinion says that also the 2000 Amas Tchum is Menatera. One opinion says that Menatera it's only 12, it's actually much more, it's 12 mil, and it's only Midr Abanan that it's 2,000. And one opinion says the whole discussion, the whole idea of Tchumen is Midr Abanan. So either it's Midr Abanan, or partially Midr Abanan, or entirely Midr Abanan. So again, either it's Minatera, or it's Minatera, and also partially Midr Abanan, or it's entirely Midr Abanan. And so to Baishvus, we have similar opinions. One opinion says that all of the Inyanam of Shvus are Minatera, because the Torah says Tish Bais, it's just that it was given over to the Chachamim. One opinion says that some Shvusim are Minatera, and some are Midrabanon. And one opinion says that the whole thing of Shvus is Midrabanon. So they also share this common aspect when it comes to their source, whether they are both Minatera, or they're partially Minatera and partially Midrabanon, or whether they are entirely Midrabanon. So also there we see this shared thing between Tchumen and Shvus. However, in truth, there's a great difference between Isr Tchumen and Isr Melach on Shabbos. We just said how they seem to be connected. In truth, there's a great difference between them and to the extent that they are complete opposites. Because the idea of doing an Isr of Melach on Shabbos, which we said is that is Shvus falls into that category, is that a person is being Mechal Shabbos, which means that the person is making a Chalal and an empty space in Shabbos. Meaning, in other words, that through Malacha, a person is bringing Klippa into Shabbos, they're bringing Mechalol Shabbos, they're bringing Klippa into Shabbos. 
When it comes to Tchumim, however, the Isra of going out of the Tchum isn't that a person is bringing Klippa into Shabbos, but rather that the person is bringing Shabbos out to the place of Klippa. Because the Eir Kedusha Shabbos shines by every Yid, without exception. And when a Yid goes outside of the Tchum of Kedusha, a person leaves the place of Kedusha. When a Yid goes out into the world of Ra and Tuma, so they bring along the Kedusha Shabbos to the place of Klippa. And this isn't similar to Taisa Shabbos that we add time, because over there the Torah tells us to. Here when a person is taking it into the Mokim of Ra, the place of Ra and Tumah, so they're bringing the Gdusha Shabbos to the place of Klippa. And therefore now we're going to get back to our earlier point, why we say Yekonas, a person should go in. It's understood that the issue of going outside the Tchum continues the whole time that a person is there. The issue is not that the person just went out and brought the Gdusha into the place of Klippa. The issue is that it's there the entire time, every moment that it's there. And so it's understood very well, the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, that rules Yikonis, the person should go in, because if it's mutter to go in, then a person must go in and not remain in the place of Klippa. Now we're going to move on and learn about the Hira and Avaida Sa'adam. From all of this, like from everything in Torah, which is Lashon Hira, there is a Hira and Avaida Sa'adam. The main Metzias of a Yid is their Nefesh Elikis, which is a Chelek Elikam Mal Mamash. And therefore, just like Hashem is infinitely elevated and removed from every source of the creation of the worlds, not just the worlds, but even the Makar and Sherish of the worlds, to the extent that the Asar Mamaris, with which the world was created, they're called to Hashem, Milin de Hedyaita, so so too a Yid is above all worldly matters. And it's just that the Torah commands us, Sheishis Yamim Tavid, Rasizakomalachtecha. But otherwise, a Yid is essentially completely and infinitely elevated and removed from all worldly matters. And it's just that our involvement in is because Hashem said, and regarding that involvement, also in this, and a Yid's involvement in the world, a Yid is similar to Hashem, because just like Hashem contracted himself, he was Metzamsim himself to create the worlds, so to a Yid, a Yid is created in such a way that a Yid must contract themselves to be involved in worldly matters. And according to this, this idea that a Yid is completely removed from the worlds, it's understood that when a Yid is occupied in worldly and mundane matters, it is a Tzimtzum, it's a Tzimtzum, and a lowering down of themselves. But their real essence, the real essence of the Yid is the level of Shabbos. Like Shabbos represents being completely removed and elevated from the world. And therefore, the two dinim of Shabbos contain Ha'ira in the general Aveda of every Yid, since the Yid's real Metzias is that of Shabbos. So we have the two different dinim, that of doing Malacha and that of Tchum. The Isra of doing Malacha and Shabbos is bringing in worldly and mundane matters into the mind of a Yid. Because the part of the Yid that's called Shabbos is the Moichen, the mind, the mind, the heart, the Kaychus Pnimim. So the Isra of Dung Malacha means that a person shouldn't bring worldly and mundane matters, Malacha, into Shabbos, into the Kaychus Pnimim. And although a Yid is commanded, that they have to be occupied in worldly and mundane things, nevertheless, a person should only involve their Kaychus Achitzainim, their external Kaychus, but not their Kaychus Pnimim. Because all their Kaychus Pnimim have to be dedicated to Teir and Avedah. And like the Pasuk says, what should be involved in a person's work? It's only Yigiyaka the external, the Kechus Chitzainim. And when a Yid brings worldly matters into their mind, they're bringing, they're doing a Malach on Shabbos, that makes a Chalol and an empty space from Hergish Aliki. It stops Yid from having a Hergish Aliki. Because if a Yid knew and felt the truth, that only Birchas Hashem Hitasher, and as it says, Hashem Hashem gives the Baruch of so then they wouldn't put their head in the work to find various schemes that don't help, since it's Birch HaShem Itasher, and to the contrary, the extra involvement and preoccupation that stop a Yid from Teir and Aveda, they actually stop a Yid from being a proper Kli for the Birch HaShem. So the idea of doing Malacha on Shabbos is that a person takes worldly and mundane matters and brings it into the part of the Yid that should be removed from worldly and mundane matters, into the Kaychus Primim of a Yid, the mind and heart of a Yid. In addition, also a person who doesn't bring their work into Shabbos, they don't do Malacha on Shabbos, they don't bring worldly mundane matters into their Kaychas Pnimim, that person also needs to know that there is another warning, there's another Hazara, which is the Isra of going out of the Tchum. 
What that is saying is that on Shabbos, on Shabbos you can't go out of the Tchum. On Shabbos, which is the time belonging to Torah and Mitzvahs and, and Avedis Atfila, a person may not leave the Tchum even with their Kaychas HaChitzainim. A person can't say that on Shabbos they could take their Kaychas HaChitzainim outside of Shabbos, outside of Tusha. The only thing involved in Tusha is the Kaychas Pnimim, a person's heart and a person's mind. A person can't do that. That's called, that's the Isser, that's the Azar of Tchumim. Because the Torah has to penetrate a person's entire body. It has to be a Rucha Bechor or Machai So it has to be penetrate a person's entire body and all of their limbs. So that's the idea of Tchumim, that a person can't say that on Shabbos only the Kaychas Primim are involved. In Torah Mitzvahs and Avedas Atfila, only the Kaychas Primim are involved. But the Kaychas Chitzenim could go outside. They could go into a place of, 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 of Gashmias. But rather, a person has to bring all of their Kaychas in to their Avedis Hashem, into Teira, into Mitzvahs, into Avedis Atfila. And then we have another era. The final, the final Mishnah, Meseches Erevin, teaches the Din regarding a Sheretz that is found in the Mikdash. This teaches us that even after fulfilling all the teachings of Meseches Shabbos and Meseches Erevin, it's at the very end, which is by keeping worldly matters out of one's mind and by making sure that while being involved in Torah, also one's feet are in the Tchum, it's still possible that there will be a Sheretz in a person's Mikdash. Because the Tumah of Sheretz isn't one that comes from a person's body, but rather it comes from the outside, from the Sheretz, which this represents that it's not coming from the person, the person already completed Mesech Shabbos, the person completed Mesech HaSerif, completed all of that Avedah. And what's the reason there's still Tumah is because it comes from the outside. And since the world is not yet refined, so it's possible for there to be a Sheretz in one's Mikdash. And even though the Tumah doesn't come from the person, and the person isn't to blame for it, to blame for it but nevertheless, like we learn in the Mishnah, everyone agrees that the person must remove it. And they only argue about how a person should remove it. One opinion says, Behem Yainai. Which that means if there's tumma outside of a person, that a person should immediately remove the tumma in a way of a slapshus, of being very involved in it. At least if one's levushim, one's levushim should be involved in a way of a slapshus. And even though it says, I'm a in maneuver in the gamkin, when a person engages in such a way with something that's dirty, they become dirty as well. So how could a person engage with the tumma in such a manner? It's still worth it in order not to allow the tumma to remain. And another opinion holds that the avayda is to be careful not to touch the sherets, even with one's levushim. That's the Avedah. When you see Tuma outside of a person, a person should work on not engaging with it, but rather to search for wooden tongs to remove the sherets, which in the words of the Tanya means, Yasa Atzmeh a person should make themselves as if they don't see this Tuma, they should make believe it's not there. And Sarach Kviyas Itim Vishasa Kesher, and the wooden tongs means that you need a special time to deal with these types of things, not to add in the Tuma, even if it holds off the Tikkun. So even though the tikkun is not being done, but a person should not involve themselves with the Tumah. Either way, whichever way we're going to understand it, and especially now when we find ourselves close to the coming of Mashiach, and it's already Kalu Kala Kitzim, and the only thing left that it, that it depends on is Tshuva, and that Tshuva we know is B'Shayt Chado Uverigo Chado, and Tshuva from Avar Abba has the ability to transform something from Tumah to Tahar, so either way, and especially now, it's obvious that it's the schos and chayva of each and every one to remove the Ruach HaTumma from the world through HaFatsa Samayana Schutza and to be Mekarev and Memar, the Ka'asi Mar that comes about through HaFatsa Samayana Schutza, the Karev Mamish.